Hey everyone, welcome back to my workbench. Um, sorry about the last recording, I didn't realize there was something really messed up with my microphone setup. So I went through and uh, redid my settings. Um, I'm also trying uh, recording at 1080p this time, set at 720. So maybe a little bit sharper, a little easier to see. It looks pretty decent in the preview. Um, so this, we're back to the Sega Nomad here. Uh, still a neat little system. So um, I did actually get that little troublesome speaker wire off of the um, off the connector, the audio connector here. And so what I'll do it right now is just tack on. I'll figure out how to get back, how to reconnect this. Usually you can press a little tiny button on it. Uh, like a little tab and it lets you go ahead and pop that whole connector out. I can pop it out and uh, do a tack it down soldering real quick. I'm going to use the stereo microscope to uh, take a look at it real quick. Let me see if I can see a little tab or not. Yeah, there's a little tiny tab in there. Should be able to push that down and push it out. See a little screwdriver. I'll show this on the uh, electronic scope in a minute. Some things are just really hard to do. There's a little a bit of lag that gets me. Been off a little while doing these videos because we got a new family member, a new miniature poodle in the house, so it's been keeping me busy. Let's see if I can pull it out. Uh, it's not quite past the tab yet. What I'll do is I'll pry it up and then I'll pull it with a pair of needle nose. Connector has been quite fussy. Oh, get the smooth ones. See if I can grab onto it or just push it out. This is a non cooperative connector. still push it out. I have a near where I'll use a tweezer tip. See if I can push it out. I don't know how bad the audio was messed up in the last video. But I did get my new soldering iron and it works very very well. Uh, it's all digital control. Really good temperature control. I'm really happy with it so far. Here we go. Push it out. Maybe I can tweeze it up. There we go. Got it. Get out of there. All right. So what these actually look like? Put this away. These are just kind of like uh, they're just a, a little. Oh, the best to describe it. Yep, my scope stopped working again. I don't know what's up with that. Oh, I'll live without it for now. Um, at least I got the audio working. So these are little tiny little tabs um, that the wires go into. One side, of course, accepts the uh, the little square header pin there, and then the other side is what the wire goes into. Let's see if I can get it in there and give it a little bit better crimp. Otherwise, uh, a very the technique I always do when I use crimp connectors, I hit it with a little bit of solder just to get a really good uh, mechanical connection. 
I don't know why my scope isn't working. Hmm. That's not going anywhere. Turn my iron on. Key is I don't want to burn my workbench. So what I'm going to do is apply. It's a little plate over here. It's a little bit of solder just to hold it in place. I really do like uh, digital temperature control on soldering irons. Makes your life a lot easier. I am old school. I still go with the uh, uh, tin lead solder. I don't like uh, no hot stuff much. You get too much dendritic growth going on there. tin whiskers, whatever they want to call it. Either way, it's bad. That's why for uh, somewhere in the late 90s, early 2000s, you'll notice there was a big spree of uh, electronics that just failed. And that was because they were transitioning from lead to lead-free solder. They hadn't got all the kinks worked out. Even now, you still have more issues with um, lead-free solder than leaded solder. Considering the total amount of lead used around the world for electronics, it's sometimes I think it's just a little bit of an overkill. Because um, like one car battery will have more lead in it than like 30 years of electronics. It's kind of silly. So the other big use of lead is car batteries, of course. Oh, it goes in that way. Putting it in upside down. I think. Am I? Yeah, I was. I wish I had the little... There's a little tool they actually make to uh, insert these pins back in. You can usually do it with a pair of needle nose pliers, but... Um, there is an official little, like, it's this little white and green, uh, there we go, plastic tool that lets you, uh, extract and put pins back into place. But since I don't, didn't build this connector originally, I don't really have that option. Come on, you can get past your tab there. Oh, I should charge extra next time for these little connectors. Usually, they hold together real nice, and I don't have a problem. Okay, so I'm going to pause for now. Thanks. Okay, that was a longer pause than I expected. Um, working on the, uh, continue to work on the Nomad here. Um, I just wanted to power up, uh, I had to get the speaker wire replaced on there, and I wanted to hear how the speaker sounds. Got a little static, not a lot, but a tiny bit of static going on there, and I think, it's hard to hear, but it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like, I'm going to be doing a cap replacement anyway on this one, so see if that clears it up. So this is the original screen, um, yeah, it's pretty darn hard to see. Uh, so I'm going to do next is, um, so the points we're going on here, there's a, I'll show you, there's a, you see, there's a, if you pick up off the ground, there's a lot of test points, like test point 207 is a ground. And you come in here, that's the raw power coming in, I got about 8.37 volts coming in, so a little low on my power supply coming in, but um, that's the direct 
power supply. Some people come in on the 5 volt line here and I find um, I run into some issues and I'm going to be working with this larger screen for the first time today. So I don't usually use the, the large board screen, I usually use a small board screen. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, we'll tack it in the place temporarily and then see what we can do in terms of um, I do have some wires on here. I'll probably leave them on there. If not, I'll come in on these uh, solder pads here and solder in my own wires. So, let's take a look. So, white wire is ground. This one, I need to grab a switch. I think I have one here. Might as well wire in the switch while I'm here. Do, do, do. Right. White wire. Let's see, I should have enough room. How C D panel sits like let's see. Which way do we sit here? That's a good question. in here mm -hmm. All right, so how are you sitting here Puzzle. Let's see. I'm slightly confused here. Okay, hold on. What am I supposed to hook into here, guys? So the hmm. Hold on. Hang on a tick. Okay, so that means I probably have to cut down these wires right away. This is all a new board from uh, 
console 5, this 3D printed piece here. So I might have to wind that up a little bit because I see it's not sitting flush. And I don't like how the see where this wire comes out here. It's coming directly onto the uh, oh, where the push buttons are at. So it's kind of a weird bend. So what I'll do is I'll just go and solder directly to it right away. So that's up. Oh, there's another set of signal inputs there. I'll go in there. VCC digital ground. WP1. What the heck is WP1? Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Let's see. The yellow wire is that. Comes the third wire down. Tell where the trace goes. Well, let's take a look here. Yellow wire is going to be channel one here it's gonna hit there this must be test inputs so that's your video in ground yeah one one ground there two grounds there so that's a video ground because this is the S video right next the uh, component uh, composite right there. Yeah. So those are those two. Let's get a wire for that. Uh, where is my stash of wire? Let me pause just a second. So what I'll do is I'll use the um, I'll run a separate ground for the uh, video. And then uh, the digital ground of a different line coming in. It's this IDC cable, ribbon cable. See, there's actually quite a few steps that go into even the simplest mods here. This is not a terribly complicated one, but it still takes a fair amount of steps to do. It's not tinned terribly well. Hold on a second. Let me get in there. I go. There's another little flux. Help things flow a little better. There we go. Okay, so I'm back for now. My wife is looking at some credit card fraud on our account, so I had to pull.
cause. I might have to stop this sh short tonight to uh, see what's going on with that. So many. We just got a new dog, and then I have to deal with hearing about um, figuring out what's going on with uh, credit cards and my wife's one email account got uh, basically spam bombed so we had to like disable that account it was ridiculous Ay, so computer fun and her hard drive on her computer failed recently so I had to replace that so I just don't know world give me a break here a minute so I'm just going through now and um, I put on the wires for the power and the signal here let's see so this sits So this board is going to sit facing this guy. These wires are going to come over here. I might need to extend this red wire out for the uh, power so I can put the switch in line. But let me uh, tack these down real quick. Okay, so that goes to composite. Hold on a second. Okay, so it turns out um, I did get the uh, new wires soldered on here, so they're, they're coming out the opposite direction, so it'll be easy to work with. Um, had to deal with some uh, personal stuff. My poor wife got her debit card. Uh, must have been skimmed off of something. So, I will be wiring this up uh, tomorrow and giving it a try. And once I know it works and doesn't have any screen issues, then I'll remove uh, this screen. And then I'll start the uh, recapping process on here. But I uh, had a lot going on tonight, so I wasn't able to get that much done. But tomorrow should be, with any luck, uh, able to start going. Because when you actually get to it, you have... It's just a bunch of... Uh, it's regular old caps that need to be replaced. I'll probably show some of them getting done, but it gets, it's really boring actually watching some of the replace caps. So uh, these Nomad's not too bad to recap because they're they just have a little tab here and a little tab there. So what you do is you just kind of uh, heat up one side, and pop it up, heat up the other side, it pops right off, and then you can just drop a new one on. Usually there's enough solder left on the pads that uh, it's not really an issue. Uh, I just have to remember to turn down the um, heat on the iron slightly, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, it's a pretty easy fix, actually. So I'll just go through and pop all these caps off. I'll show some of them, but I won't bore you with all of them. Um, like this board, it's only got four caps on it, then all the rest are down on, on this board. So it's not too bad. So I'll pull off the, make sure the new screen works, pull off the old screen, and go on from there. Thanks for watching.